Welcome back to MacBreak Studio. We are here with Mark Spencer and we're looking at some 3D eye trickery. Yes, definitely. Let's just let's just take a look at it right here. So I have this photograph of the beach. This is a stock photo and um, I'll just select it and rotate. I've got a camera in my scene, but you can see this is a flat photo, nothing fancy here. And what I've done is created uh, what is sometimes called a forced projection of this photo. And so you can see I've got two clone layers here. If I turn this original photo off and turn these clone layers on, I've got one that is kind of way back in the distance here. Interesting. And then I've got this bottom one with the boardwalk is actually laid flat. If I rotate the camera, you can see it's <laughs> laid flat and stretched way back in Z space. That's trickery already. Yeah, so I'm not gonna do this. We actually did an under five on how to do this part of it. Right. So I'm not gonna cover this here. And this, by the way, is um, part of our warp speed motion uh, 3D tutorial. Right, which we recently released. Recently released, yeah. So it kind of builds on that idea. So I've got this environment now. And the cool thing about once you've got a little environment like this, where that we have basically a floor and a wall, you can do things like move the camera. So if I start to move the camera, we can actually move the camera oh my in that gosh, scene. And that is it, so cool. Kind of make it look like it comes alive. Now, you can't stretch things too much because, uh, you know, if you lose resolution, it starts to get blurry. And you can't work with uh, super large photographs because you'll overwhelm your graphics card. So you can definitely kind of push the limits here. But what I want to show you is how to go a little further with this. So I'm going to hit T for the text tool, click in here and type summer, escape, and make the size quite a bit bigger and also center align it. And I'll hit F1 and reset. And I'm also hit the Q key just so I can adjust this in 3D space. And I can move this up and down. But right now, this guy is in the very front of our scene. In fact, I'm gonna to go to the view menu and turn off this inset view just so it's not in the way. And if I rotate, you can see that's right in the very front. But I wanna set it back in space. So I'm gonna drag on this Z control that moves it back. And I'm gonna move it straight down. You can see it'll intersect our Right, because 3D it's scene. a 2D layer. Right. And I'm gonna make 3D text, but the point here is 3D text can't interact with 2D layers. We've talked about this yes. before and you think, oh, I can't make 3D text even work in a 2D composition. Uh -huh. But you can, you just have to kind of set things up right. <laughs> so I'm setting, I'm starting with 2D. I'm gonna push this back a little further and we can see it's just touching the floor because it's intersecting there. And I'll also make the text bigger. Now I've gone about as far as I can with the font size. So I'm just gonna scale it up. So it's nice and big here. Nice. And now I'm going to go ahead and make it 3D. So in the text inspector, I'll enable 3D text and I'll drop down and give it a nice wood. Maybe this, oh, this ash wood. So it's something that differs a little from the background here. And let's also make it a little thicker and also add some weight to it. Something like that. Yeah. So now I've got this 3D text and it kind of looks like it's in the scene. See, it looks like it's sitting on that floor. Kinda. But if I keep turning around, we never see the sky because it stays in the front all the time. But right. it's basically sitting on that floor now as 3D text. But if I drag, by the way, I'm double clicking on one of these tools up here to, to reset, reset the, the view. Yeah. Exactly. If I drag this down, it no longer intersects, okay? Right. But we can bring this more into the scene by adding a light. So from the object menu, I'm gonna add a new light and I get this default point light that I can kind of move around here, but it makes our whole scene pretty dark. And it doesn't feel summery anymore. No, it really doesn't. <laughs> I'm gonna change this in the heads up display to a directional light. And a directional light points all of its rays in the exact same direction, right. which by default is straight back. So the only thing- So it's hitting up, the wall, it's hitting the facade back there. Yes, but not the floor. So if I tilt it down, oh, it can start not, to light the floor. Ah. And if I enable shadows in heads up display, we can now see that it's starting to put shadows on the text. So wait, to, to, just to clarify, so 3D text not interacting with the 2D layers can be faked by adding a light. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, and I think here the sun is kind of behind us. Right. Uh, we see this little ring of it up there. So I'm gonna keep rotating this directional light so it faces towards us and maybe a little like that. And then I'm also gonna tilt it to about where I think the sun is there. Now, I don't want this light to affect the photograph at all. So I'm gonna select both these clone layers and in the properties inspector, down under the lighting, instead of using inherited shading, I'm just gonna turn it off. And that oh. way the light doesn't affect our scene. It only affects uh, this text that's casting that shadow. Right. And I can pretty quickly create a pretty realistic interaction 
of the text and the shadow. Now, I, that shadow is a little bit bright, yeah. or a little bit dark, I should yeah. say, a little bit. It's, har it's a it harsh is, shadow. It's very harsh. So in the, uh, in the properties for the light, um, for the light, here we go, and shadow, I'll show shadows. I'm gonna bring the opacity down, so it's not quite that yeah, hard. Yeah. And I could also increase the softness um, and do a it's, few more things There's a lot here. of clouds in the sky, it would be a little bit softer. Yeah, it'd be a little softer. But I don't wanna go too far here because I start to affect performance. Because the next thing I'm gonna do, now that I've got this text integrated into the scene, is create a little camera move on this scene. So to do that, I'll select the camera, and in the behaviors pop-up menu, we have a camera category, which I'm gonna completely ignore. Really? <laughs> yeah, instead of using these, I'm gonna to go to the basic motion category, and I'm gonna choose this one called a move behavior. Okay, you can move anything with this behavior, including mm -hmm. cameras. And I say- You have the camera selected right now? Uh, well, now the move behavior is selected. I had the camera selected, okay, got so it. I applied it to, to the camera. I'm gonna move forward in time, I don't know, about two seconds, and press O to trim the out point of that move behavior. I'll go back to the beginning, and what's kind of cool, now that we're in this projection, my starting framing, I can play around with a little bit. I can kind of move the scene around, push in a little bit, um, and set up how I want it to start. And then I'm gonna move my play to the end of this move behavior, shift O, we'll put it exactly there, and then use this on-screen control. I really wanna be a little lower. I want this to be more dramatic. So I'm gonna move this on-screen control down and push forward by dragging on the Z control, which is the arrow pointing right at us, and I'm right. just gonna push right, right through, through the, letters. the letters here, yeah. And maybe even a little bit further. So now if I play that back, with that camera pushing right through those letters, and it really looks as if we have a 3D scene uh, when it's just a simple photograph. We've got a little move there. So as a final thing, what <laughs> I'll do... That's amazing. It's kind of neat. Huh? Yeah, it's, it's fantastic. It's pretty neat what you can do. And you don't need to have this straight line. I mean, this is a nice straight line for the edge of the boardwalk, but right. it doesn't really have to be that way. I'm going to select the text, and from the Behaviors pop-up menu, I'm going to go to Text Animation and choose uh, Sequence Text in order to animate the text into place. And I'll go to about there for an out point. And then I'm going to drag this first letter up off the screen, and I'll also rotate it. Just so as I play, those letters now drop onto the screen. And I think I should also push them back a little bit in space. What's neat about this is once you set up, it's pretty easy to drag this around mm -hmm. or even rotate it and it'll stay on the floor casting those shadows. Or you can move the entire move behavior a little bit later. So it. Yeah, or it's right. It, yeah, because it's good. Right, right. the I move behavior. Start the right. move a little bit later. Yeah. Right, see the text come on first. Mm -hmm. So you can do a combination and then I'll increase the spread a little bit also of that text just so it doesn't come on one at a time, but a little bit more smoothly. So you get summer coming on and then kind of fly through that. And of course, now I'm not flying through it, so I'll adjust the move behavior just to go all the way through the text. And maybe I want to go through over here. You can see how easy it's just, ah, I'd like to fly through over here a little higher, and then I'd like to push right through the M. And you can choose exactly where you want to move to. So pretty quickly, I've got some nice, realistic 3D text interactive in a 3D environment with a little camera move. Mm -hmm. And it's just kind of an amazing thing you can do with motion, just taking nothing but a photograph and creating a really interesting composition. Uh, it, it's, I, the, the <laughs> fact, I, I am, I did, I, I, <laughs> like, the, the fact it was totally sold to me. I mean, it looks fantastic. The fact that you're just dealing with 2D planes and a shadow and it's. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. And I want to give a, a little shout out, uh, Simon Ubstel, who we've mentioned yeah. on this program a few times. He did a very sophisticated version of this. Um, projection of multiple walls, mm -hmm. but I'm finding you can just do a floor and a, and a back wall pretty easily by flipping down the floor and distorting it back out again, which you cover in the under five. I'll right. we'll put a link to that in okay. here so you can see how to do the whole process. Fantastic. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. I certainly did. And uh, go out and enjoy the rest of your summer and get away from your computer. <laughs> no, um, <laughs> go check us out on Facebook, uh, all, all the links down there. Check out Mark's excellent motion training. Uh, our Great plugins that he's created, the title nations and call outs, and they're all available through uh, FX Factory. I want to thank you again for watching another episode of MacBreak Studio. We'll see you next week.